Caleb here in the Rosa Stringworks workshop. Today I've got this 1960 Martin D18. It's got a couple of issues we're going to take a look at. Right now we've got string tension on it. I think that'll help me show you what's wrong with it. So I'm going to go ahead and set it down and try to show you what we're going to work on first. Well, uh, for starters, this bridge is loose and coming more loose as I try. It's been glued down before. You can see the impression of where it was. And glue kind of stuff on the outside. And the more I dig the piece of paper in there, the more it pulls little bits of dust out. And I think it just lets me go back in further. So that's the first thing. Um, you can also see that the saddle is shaved all the way down to the bottom. The action is still a little high on the base side. When I say it's high on the base side and it's pretty close to right on the treble side. But if I stick a straight edge on here, you can see how big the bulge is in the top. So that's something else we're going to try to address. So the more I was looking at this, but now that I've got the light, you know, shining right down on it, I can see the marks where someone's been uh, sticking a tool under the bridge so it's very likely that the whole thing was all the way off at one point I did just check to see if the intonation was right and it's very close I mean probably as close as you'd want it to be uh, the high E was right on the low E was just a little bit off but it's a little high and that might have been what I'm getting um, I guess my next thing is to get these strings off of here and actually give the inside a feel, see if anything is loose I can feel. I didn't see anything when I was looking in with the mirror, but get my hand in there, I might notice something different. So I'll get these strings off of here. So besides the bridge being loose, can you guess what else is loose? Trick question. There's nothing else loose. We've checked inside, and as nice as it would be to check in there and see that there's a brace loose and that's what's causing the top to bulge that's not what happened so the only thing to really blame is the bridge plate and it's a small bridge plate it's very thin and it doesn't cover very much so really the only option here to keep this from bulging worse to keep this from creating where the bridge comes up is we're gonna have to replace the bridge plate with something a little more substantial. Jerry and I were talking about this and I said somebody's gonna be upset that we're replacing a bridge plate in a 60 year old instrument but ultimately what are you gonna do? Try to fix it, you know, try to glue the bridge back down when it's already broken twice now the first time then somebody fixed it and it's come up again so now we're gonna have to fix it and if we don't fix it right it's just gonna do it again. Make this instrument even more unplayable so really our only option to make this guitar play is to replace this bridge plate. My first thought was to take the bridge off then remove the bridge plate, but Jerry's telling me that it'd be smarter to remove the bridge plate before the bridge because the way we have to remove the bridge plate is with this tool here. Leaving the bridge on there gives the top a little bit more strength so I'm not about to bust the top pulling the bridge plate off. It does make it a little harder to heat, but I think I can still get a heating tool in and on there, hopefully. The other thing is I'm going to have to familiarize myself with this tool. You can see here this is a Stumac bridge plate removal tool, so I gotta reach in there. This will hook on the this side of the bridge plate and I'll pull, and I'll try to pull as straight back as I can because I don't want to be prying on the top as I could very likely bust the top. This is going to be an interesting process. So I guess I'm going to get some heating tools out. We'll see about heating this up. So I've been using the, uh, the tool here and been using the heater on the inside and been trying to get it off for a little while now. We've been, even Jerry's been trying it. We've got it started but we're just having trouble getting it to go. So Jerry suggested we just take the bridge off of here. 
I don't think this is going to be a big, big deal. I want to have a yard sale come next Friday. Selling that guitar and the mandolin. Get rid of that banjo, fiddle and dog hat. And playing no bluegrass no more again. I'm always playing that bluegrass music. When I got a hundred other things to do. My wife used to tell me, can you ever do it? Happy, here's what I'll do. I'm gonna have y'all to say, come next Friday, selling that guitar and the mandolin. Get rid of that banjo, fiddle and dog cat. Ain't playing no bluegrass no more again. So after a long time trying, uh, I took it over to Jerry and Jerry got it out. So there it is. It pulled a little bit of the top off with it. We ended up with a couple of cracks in the top. I've got uh, super glue in one of them here. We did the thing where we put some tape on each side of the crack, you know, get it as tight as we can and then just run a bead of super glue. And that should seal those cracks up. So now that I've got the old bridge plate out of here, I'm ready to start working on getting the new bridge plate in. You can see I've already made it here. It's a nice piece of paduke, the grain running, it'll be perpendicular to the grain of the top. And this one is a little thicker than this and bigger than this, but it, you know, follows the same angles on the side, so it fits in there well. I've already been testing that. Uh, you can see I've got the top clamped flat so I can get this up in there and get it clamped flat. Hopefully keep the top a little flatter. The one thing I'm going to do before I get glue on this is I'm going to give it a good wipe down with some acetone and I might kind of tooth up the back to give the glue some grooves to get into. It'll help it stick a little bit better. I have already rounded off the edges on the side that's not getting glued down. So I'm going to go ahead and do that last bit of prep and then we'll be ready to glue this on. And all my records So I'll have something To listen to Take up a new hobby Like playing checkers So to keep her happy Here's what I'll do I'm gonna have y'all to say Come next Friday Selling that guitar And the mandolin Get rid of that banjo so I just took this old Martin out of the clamps and it's looking pretty good. You can probably see here, it's a lot closer to flat. There's still some dome in the top. And we don't have string tension on it, obviously, but it's a lot closer to flat than it was. So it's looking pretty good so far. So since I got the new bridge plate in there, I can work on getting the bridge back on there. I had Jerry take a look at the bridge and the way the angle lined up, and it looks like we're going to use the old bridge again. You can see I've got it cleaned up here and on the top. And what I'm going to do before I just glue it down is I'm going to check the intonation. You can see we've got set up for that. I've gone ahead and got some strings for this. All I'm going to need is the outside too. So now i got those two strings on there but the bridge is still floating so I can get these up to pitch and move the bridge until it's intonated right. So I'll go ahead and work on getting these up to pitch. Well I've got this up to pitch you can probably see there's a uh, gap behind the bridge where there's not finish. And this is intonated. I've already done all that 
So it's sitting right where the bridge needs to sit, or more over where the saddle needs to sit. And there's still that gap. So what we've decided to do is make a new bridge. I've got a nice piece of rosewood here we're going to make the bridge out of. And I'm just going to make it that little bit longer, I guess. So it'll cover that whole area and you won't have that gap where it won't match. So I can go ahead and, well, yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and take this out. I know how much wider it needs to be. I've got it on my calipers. So I can start marking this out. I'm just kind of getting ready to draw this on here. I'll get the square. Well, there you can see I got the new shape drawn on there. So basically what I did was I figured out how long this one was. The wings started them and then took my calipers and knew how long the new bridge needed to be. So I marked that out on both sides. And then I just moved this down so that those corners lined up and drew on the bottom part. There we go. I can go cut this out now and I'll have my new bridge shape. Well, you can see I've been working on this bridge here. It's starting to take shape, look like a guitar bridge. Um, it is definitely bigger than the old one. That's okay. That was the idea. It's a little longer than I thought it was, but that's, that's alright. I've still got quite a bit of shaping to do and it's way thicker than the old one is. Let's see here. This one is about 280 thousandths, 285 thousandths at its thickest. And then the new one is still 465 thousandths. So this has got to come down by quite a bit before we're in this range. And we know that the angle is good for this. It was just that the intonation was off. So I'm going to make one in a very similar height to this out of this. It'll just be bigger so it covers the whole area. So I'm going to work on thicknessing this down a little bit. That's my next step. Um, uh, there's a little bit of shaping to do still. I noticed that my, I'm not quite even on both sides, so a little bit more shaping to do and a lot of thicknessing. Well, you can see that I got the new bridge sitting on the guitar. Um, I've got a temporary saddle sitting on top to help me get this intonated. And right now, I think it's right where it needs to be. And I don't think it looks too bad. I'll try to maybe show you the guitar a little bit better. Kinda. I think it's looking pretty good. I'd like to have Jerry take a look at it. I'm noticing the saddle is leaning forward. I'd like to have Jerry take a look at it before I go marking anything to cut, but um, I'm getting there. It's getting awful close. That's spot on. There's just a little shirt. sharp actually. But yeah, those are looking really good, so I'm gonna have Jerry take a look at this before I, you know, go marking anything. And then I think the first thing we'll do is actually cut the slot for the saddle, and then we'll put it back on here with a saddle, get it intonated, and then mark it on the guitar body. And we'll scrape the finish off and glue it down. That's my current plan. We'll see how that goes. So I think I've got this all set up to do a saddle slot in this new bridge. You can see here I've got the bridge taped down to the table. I've got all these other pieces taped down too. This block back here I actually put a piece of tape on the table and a piece of tape on the block and super glued it down. So it's not moving at all. That way this can't move that way at all. Looks good. Something I didn't mention before I started was the old saddle goes all the way through. It doesn't stop. So I'm just going to match that and go all the way through. Lower my depth a little bit and cut it again. Well, you can see I've made a saddle for this bridge. It's a little tall, but it's fitting in the slot well. Uh, i try to get the bridge in place now so I can get it marked on the top. So basically what I'm going to do here is just get it intonated again. Get it off of there. Just 
and hear flat. It's looking good. Uh, the other thing I'm going to have to do is make sure I'm in the right place with the bridge this way. And while I've got it on here, I'd like to get an idea where my outside uh, holes are going to be. I can kind of do that while the strings are on it. If I'm moving it out, you can see I'm pulling on it here so it looks good running down the neck. And then I'll mark it on the bridge. So I'm going to do some time looking at it, making sure it's even. I'll bring you back once I've uh, decided something. So I had Jerry come take a look at my bridge and it's looking like it's in the right spot. So now it's time for the dangerous part. I've got my sharp tip X-Acto knife and I'm starting to score around the bridge on the finish. That way I will know what finish to remove so we can move the bridge down wood to wood. I'm not pressing very hard. That's why you can see I do a couple of passes. This finish, as old as it is, is actually really easy to cut, which would also make it really easy to go off where I don't want to. All right, I think that's good. I got all the way around it. I'll go ahead and take it out. Looks good, you can see. Well, I can at least. I don't know how well you can. See that score line all the way around. So I'll end up taking the finish off anywhere there's finish left inside that line so we can have a nice wood to wood surface to glue to. So what I need to do next is get the strings off of here so I can get working at this finish. Well, I've got this scraper here that Jerry always uses to take the finish off here. And I've started working it, taking the finish off. And the goal is to knock the finish off and not take any wood off. I'm just going through here and very lightly scraping it. This is going to take me some time, so I'm not going to film all of doing this, but it's kind of hard to show you where I can see and you can. Something kind of like that. Well, hopefully that will give you some idea what I'm doing here. I've got a lot more to do, and when I'm not filming I can hold it in directions a little better, so I don't have to worry about you seeing. So I'm not going to film any more of this, but I'm going to go ahead and get the finish all off from where my bridge is gonna go. Well, I think I'm just about ready to glue this bridge on here. You see, I got this cleaned up, it's all wood now. And I've already gone ahead and wiped down the back of this with acetone, so it's oil-free and we can get a good glue adhesion. So I'm gonna go ahead and start putting some glue on here. I've got for sale signs posted all over. It won't be long till the boat's dropping in. First hundred thousand, that's my old margin. If I 
can't sell it Gonna play it again I'm gonna have y'all to say Come next Friday Selling that guitar And the mandolin Get rid of that banjo Fiddle and doghouse This sat up overnight and you can see the bridge glued on there really well. I think it's looking really good and that means I can get started on the next section of this job. And I already have. We're going to relacquer this neck. You can see I've been sanding on it for a while. Just trying to get it smooth because it was really beat up. You know, the reason he wants it relacquered. So I've been sanding on it getting it smooth. I'm thinking I'm just about done here with smoothing it out. What I'm probably going to end up doing is taking the tuners off, but I'll still wrap the headstock because I don't really need to spray up here and I'll tape off the body too. And I'll just leave a little bit of the uh, old lacquer on so I can blend it all together. So I'm going to go ahead and finish up sanding and I'll probably get it disassembled and I'll bring you back before I start uh, taping her up. All right, so I've had a bit of a change of plans. While I was explaining to you what I was going to do, Jerry was thinking maybe the customer would like it better if we just took all the finish off the neck and then kind of dyed it back to match and made it a more, just kind of oiled the wood so it was a more raw finish, a little bit smoother than the lacquer is. Then Jerry called him, asked, talked to the customer about it, and that's what we've decided to do. So, I'm going to go through and take all the finish off this neck, all the way up to about here. I'm just going to scrape it away. Got quite a bit of scraping to do, so I'm not going to film a lot of it. You can see how it goes. Well, you can see here I've got the neck all cleaned off. Um, I've already gone ahead and taken the dark brown dye, kind of touched it up so it matches a little bit better. I think it's looking really good. What I'm going to do now is take some of this boiled linseed oil and give it a good wipe down. I'm going to wipe it down with a clean one. Take off any excess. All right, that's looking good. So I let this neck go ahead and sit while I went to lunch, you know, after I wiped it back off from the boiled linseed oil. And then I've gone ahead and wiped it down with this uh, Be Good Wood Oil. Jerry and I have been really liking this stuff. Um, it's real slick. I mean, it's, you know, it's raw wood, but it's a very, very smooth finish with that Be Good Oil. I think I still got some on my fingers. And this stuff, you really don't have to worry about it, you know, being... I, I know I say toxic, but I know the boiled linseed oil isn't, but you don't really worry about any of the chemical-y stuff in this, because it's uh, food grade. So, you know, I don't worry about it getting on my fingers or anything. And it really does make the neck nice and slick. So I'm going to go ahead and let that dry. I may even put a little bit more on it a little bit, you know, after it dries out a little bit more, just for good measure. But. Since we're done here, you know, since I'm not refinishing this anymore, that speeds me up quite a bit. There's probably like two weeks of sitting around waiting for it to dry I don't have to do. So I can get started on setting this thing back up. Uh, you can see I've got my oversized saddle back in there. And I think we're ready to get some strings, or more over the strings that I used already. Right here. So we'll put them on and we can... Get the rest of the strings on for the bridge pins, they're in order. 
I'm gonna go ahead and put the bevel on all of these bridge pins since they don't have them. I'm just gonna do that with a file. I'm sure you've seen Jerry put the bevel on the bridge pins before. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this thing strung back up. Bevel all the bridge pins and then put the strings on. So we get an idea how high my saddle is. I know it's a little high, but I don't think it's, you know, all too high. So I'll bring it back once I got some strings on it. While I was working on this, you know, getting the saddle fit and everything, I noticed there's an open crack on the side here. I'm trying to get it where you can see it. Maybe the light's not reflecting off it too bad. But there's an open crack right here. And I'm going to get some super glue in it. Just seal it with the super glue. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put tape on both sides. And I'm noticing there's actually a couple here. There's like one here, one here, and one here. I'll probably do all three. Just tape them on both sides get it as close to the crack as I can. And then run a bit of super glue down it. That should seal them up. But you can probably see how flexible it is here. Especially right here. So those cracks need to be addressed. So we'll do that. So I'll show you kind of how I do this. You can see I've got blue painter's tape on both sides of the crack. And it's really tight on there. And then I just take this super glue and I just run a bead down the crack. And I'll take just a little cloth and wipe off the excess. And I might do this once or twice just to make sure that that crack is filled. So we'll do it one more time on this crack. Pull up that tape. Fortunately, this happens sometimes. Um, it may not look real good, but it's, man, it's really weak right there. Almost like it's missing something. I'm gonna look on the inside, because that just does not seem right. So I've cleaned that crack up a little bit now. The super glue seems to have, you know, attached the two sides of the crack, but it is still really weak right here. And I've noticed it's the same on the other side. So I guess the sides are just really thin. You know, that's kind of worrisome because if you were to drop it, I bet if you were to drop this on something, that something will go straight through that side. If you want to see, the other side has a couple of cracks in it too and is just as weak. I'm going to probably end up just putting a little bit of glue in all of these cracks. I don't really trust them to stay closed or that they are closed. It's just really weak in there. And I'm not pushing very hard, by the way. I really don't want to break this. <laughs> so anyways, I'll work on this a little bit more. I'll take my tape. There's one side. Now I'll, I'll go ahead and do my super glue just like I just did. Maybe one more. It's a lot more super glue than I wanted. And it gets away from you. Well, I don't think we've made that big of a mess. So there you go, you can see how I did it again. And if it needs a little bit of cleanup, I can scrape it just a little bit with my X-Acto and then sand with a really high grit and it should be just fine. A little more solid. So I'll go ahead and work on the rest of them. See how they turn out. I'll bring you back when I'm uh, Ready to move on. Well, you can see I've got the saddle on it and all the strings on it. The thing I really need to do now is get some of this bulk taken off here. The uh, height is almost right. It's really, really close. I may take it down just a little bit more, but first I'd like to take some of this bulk off of here so I can, you know, make sure it's going to look good. The best way to do that is to use the uh, drum sander attachment for my kind of Dremel tool here and just, you know, work some of that out. I'm not going to take it all the way down with this tool. I'll end up using the file and maybe even some sandpaper to get a little bit closer. But I'll start with this and I'll try to, you know, be real careful with it. So, I guess uh, I'm going to kind of get at it. Hang your head and cry. Hang my picture on the wall that I will fall. Kiss me when you're leaving. No good will it do. It's good by so long you. Well, that's all I'm going to show of that. You can probably tell it uh, knocks it off, but, you know, not too much too quickly. There's a little bit of a, you know, a little bit of a skill to it because I'm working at an angle here. i got to tilt this up. 
because I can't go at it straight, so I gotta, you know, make sure I'm doing it the same. But it's looking pretty good. So I'm gonna go ahead and, you know, finish this one up and then do the other one, and I'll bring you back a little bit later. Well, we're getting close to finished on this old Martin here. I've got all the strings on it. We're up to pitch. I'm liking the action. Uh, I'm liking the way the saddle's fitting in the slot. I think one more thing I'm gonna do here is give my new wood surfaces a little wipe down with this Be Good oil we've been using. It's pretty good stuff. We've been liking it, Jerry and I. So, I'm gonna give the new bridge a little wipe down. And then I'll go through the uh, the neck too and give it a good wipe down. That Be Good oil is really slick. So I think it's gonna be really good on his neck. You know, there's just a little bit of beeswax in there and I think that slickens it up real good. Get it kind of where you can see it. I think this neck's actually looking really good. The color looks good. It doesn't look super out of place. It feels really good. I'm gonna go ahead and wipe that down with a clean one. Kind of buff off any excess. One more thing that I'm gonna do just because it's sitting here and I can do it is I'm gonna put a little bit of oil in those tuners. Um, I'm not gonna turn them over up the pitch, but I'm just gonna put a dot in there and clean it off. And as those get turned, that should work its way in and help those tuners out. I think beyond maybe a little bit of buffing, we're just about done here. It's looking real good. The action's good. And it sounds good. I think uh, we're just about done here. I'm pretty sure he wanted us to take a look at the case on this guitar, or for this guitar. So I'll probably get that out and take a look at it, see if there's anything we can do to make it a little nicer. And I think after that, I'll have Jerry take a look at the whole thing and it should be good to go. I'll uh, play it for you here after I take a look at the case and if there's anything good I can do on the case, I'll show you that. So I had Jerry take a look at this, and there were a couple things he uh, suggested I do before we send it off. Most of the little things, so we're going to start with one of the uh, more fidgety ones. He suggested that we cleat these cracks, uh, the ones here and the ones on the opposite side. So I've gone ahead and made some cleats. I've actually gone ahead and cut these out on the laser cutter, and then beveled them back by hand. They're kind of fancy little diamonds. I think they'll look nice and still do what uh, they're meant to do. What they are is they're mahogany cleats to match the mahogany of the sides, but the grain will be running perpendicular to the grain in the side so that it won't split at the same place the uh, crack is. We're gonna end up using magnets to get these in here. because There's just not a better way to put cleats in. Involved process here, I think. That's bet's gonna be setting it on its side. Getting my cleat placed. That's it's gonna be kind of hard to show you where those are. Let me get the magnet on it. I want it to be clamped in there pretty good. Clean up some of that glue. I'll try to show you that. There you can see it, I think. It's right there. What is that? Uh, there's just a bit of something in there, that light color. Maybe part of the bridge plate or something, but you can kind of see that cleat in there. I'm going to go ahead and put in another one. I don't know if I'm going to put another one in on this side. Probably. That's the lower one. I'll try to find that higher crack. Put one on it as well. I don't think I'm going to film a whole lot more uh, putting cleats in here because there's not much for me to show. So, one of the last things I'm doing to this uh, old Martin here is just making sure we get it all cleaned up around the bridge, you know, where we had been working. Um, I got some of the semi-chrome polish. I'm just trying to make sure I get around the bridge. Really good. I don't want it to look like we worked on it. Really. Should just match the rest of the instrument. And then when I'm happy with that, I'm gonna go ahead and use the Renaissance wax on the whole top. And I think I am happy with that. So, I'm gonna hit the whole top with the Renaissance wax. I think it's just going to make the top look a little bit nicer, give it a good shine, blend all the areas together, make it all look cohesive. Not like one area was buffed more than the others. Nice and shiny. 
You can see the reflection of that light real well. I think that's looking really good. Well, that about wraps it up for this old Martin. Uh, I don't know if I had said it, but I looked at the case and there wasn't a whole lot for me to do to it. So I didn't bother filming anything there. I'll give you one more good look at this old Martin here. This uh, 1960 Martin D18. It's got a new bridge and a new bridge plate, and oh boy did it help the action. It flattened that top out quite a bit. Because it had just bulged up so much in that top, the action was just unplayable. And now, the action's sitting in a good spot. Something that's kind of neat about this old Martin is we've actually got the receipt from making its purchase. Uh, Melissa might be able to put this on screen so you can actually see it. But there's the receipt from buying it from Kingston Loan and Jewelers in 1963. Martin D18 a case. I think it says $230. So I'd say this uh, guitar is appreciated in value a little bit. You know, we definitely did some good work to this, besides the bridge, you know, I remember these cracks were open, and I super glued them shut. Then I put some cleats on the inside. They're kind of hard to see, but uh, they're in there. There's three on this side and two on this side. And they're fairly small cleats, but I can actually show you kind of what one looks like. Here it is again. That's the cleat that went in there. You know, we also scraped all the finish off the neck. We were originally going to refinish it, but Jerry had talked to the customer and we decided that we were just going to go with the raw wood. Uh, we also dyed that neck to match and I think it looks really good, you know. I don't think it looks out of place at all and you probably wouldn't notice that it were was wood until you grabbed it. You know, that nice new rosewood bridge and antler saddle, I think it makes for a good sound. I'm going to play it a little bit, but uh, not a whole lot. Jerry's going to sing you a song on this guitar here, so I'll, you know, just give you a little bit of playing it and then I'll pass it back to Jerry and he can sing you the song. If you liked watching this old Martin get a little bit of work done. If you did like watching it, a thumbs up would be appreciated. A subscribe would be even more appreciated. I uh, hope you enjoyed Jerry's little song here. Thanks for watching. Well, my friends, this D18 that uh, Caleb worked on uh, turned out real nice. I tuned it up, set it over the weekend, and uh, it plays perfectly. Uh, didn't lose a bit of tuning. I mean, it was like off. A hair on one string so you can't hardly beat that the top is just as flat as a pancake now compared to that huge bulge that was in it when I first saw it I said well that is your problem right there you know <laughs> that bulge you just can't get them to set up right and play correctly and hold together with a big bulge in it like that so he made a new bridge and new saddle and that turned out real good. The action's uh, just about right for a Martin guitar in my opinion. Might be a little bit high to suit some of you, but for uh, you know country bluegrass type music it's perfect. Got a real nice sound. That new Paduke bridge plate don't hurt it any, I can tell you that. flat pick for anything I'll just go ahead and send you a tune taking me for granted was your first mistake that was the beginning of my last heartache then you added insult to my injury when you started treating me just as you please so kind your plans you might be making no more foolish chances am I taking you played love's game too rough as for me I've had enough for the going got 
too rough, so count me out. Nice guitar. These are much sought after instruments in the bluegrass field, and this is a really nice one. Hope you enjoyed it. Yeah.